So for today's video, we're gonna be talking about how I got my first paying client. Well, kinda how I got my first paying client. But this is gonna start a brand new series on this channel that I'm gonna try to post videos on Thursdays for our Throwback Thursday video. So, yeah, let's roll that intro. All right, so when I first started making videos, uh, I pretty much was just making like dance videos because I actually used to dance back in the day, like break dancing, all that kind of stuff. And so I used to make dance videos for like my friends and you know, I made a couple for myself and stuff like that. But eventually I realized that, you know, I really like this video stuff and then I wanted to kind of make it a career. I wanted to have, you know, fun with it, but also make a living. And I wasn't sure how to do that at all. I mean, just like most people, I think the very first thing I ever tried to take on was like a wedding. And I realized very quickly that that really wasn't my thing, especially when I was starting out. But then one weekend actually rolled around and it was right after uh, me and my wife had just had our new baby. And I had decided that I wanted us to be able to go on vacation. But like most people who just have a baby, you don't have this just influx of extra cash laying around. So I decided I would try to reach out to some different people who owned, you know, vacation properties and see if they would be up for exchanging a video of their property in exchange for us being able to stay there. And I mean, this is before like Airbnb or any of that kind of stuff, but there was this one site called HomeAway and I definitely took advantage of that site. Now see, the nice thing about using HomeAway was that it put basically all my target audience people in one little location. So for example, I wanted us to go on a little vacation to South Padre because it was close enough to Houston that we could drive and I could easily type in all the little vacation homes in South Padre since it's a big vacation destination type place. And most people aren't living in those houses. They're just kind of living them up for rent. And everyone on that site had an easy way to communicate with them. So I emailed probably about, I don't know, probably close to like 30 to 45 people and reached out to all these people asking them, hey, I'm a videographer. I'd love to come and you know shoot a video of your rental property in exchange for my, me and my family being able to stay in there over the weekend. And I got a handful of responses actually, but one response was really big. I actually had a lady who responded and asked me, hey, I have four properties that need to be shot. Could you and your family stay for the week and shoot all four properties? And I was like, yeah, absolutely, 100%. I put in my time request away from work and I went off on this vacation and honestly, this exchange changed everything for me. See, the reason why I say this changed everything was because by the end of that week, I had four videos that could show what I could do. And honestly, what me and my family got by being able to stay in that house for the week was worth way more than what I actually could have probably ever charged them for the video. And it was a great exchange. And so, you know, one, this, one thing that this taught me for sure was that when you're first starting out, you don't have to necessarily shoot completely for free because there's always an exchange of value. You can always exchange your shooting for something that could benefit you. In this case, it was a vacation with my family. But the other thing that this taught me was that you need to have a body of work that you could then go and shop out to future potential clients. Because see, what exactly happened with this shoot was after it was done, I then put the videos up on Facebook and I got the attention of a few people who worked in the real estate industry who were eager to then want to work with me. Now, let me preference this with my Throwback Thursday by saying, these videos are terrible. That's the whole point of this Throwback Thursday is to show you guys videos that were not very good. But I want to show you guys this video to show you kind of where I started in my real estate video career and then ultimately to tell you guys that it doesn't necessarily matter how good your video is when you're first getting started, but that you need to inspire someone and show someone kind of like your potential through your video and that might just get you your first paying gig because I'll tell you, 
after these videos, honestly, as bad and as cringy as they are to watch today, after these videos, I started getting more and more paying gigs in the real estate world. And it all started from just exchanging my video service for a free vacation home. Now, another important thing to remember is after I finished those first set of videos, before I jumped into my next set of real estate videos, I continued to grow and really craft my style. I mean, from a couple different things. One, I started doing more research on it. I started looking into better gear to get. And honestly, I tried my best to make my next real estate video even better than my last, which I have to say, between my first four set of videos from all those um, houses in Padre, my next real estate video, I would say, definitely got better, but there were still things for me to work on. Now, the best part about doing this craft, this, this video craft, is that over time, things naturally get easier because the technology improves. So for example, when I first started doing real estate, gimbals didn't exist. And so in order to get big sweeping shots, I had to bring out a jib. Now, I can do all that stuff in half the time, don't have to worry about bringing out a jib, and I can shoot it all on a gimbal, which makes it so much easier. And if I would've had a gimbal when I first got started, I probably would've learned a lot quicker. But I will say that continuing to improve your craft and being able to make better videos, which is what I was always channeling to do, well, that's what the whole point is all about. If you wanna get more paying clients, you first gotta start out by giving them a body of work that they can be inspired behind. But if you wanna keep those paying clients and you wanna get more paying clients, well, then you have to continue to improve your work, continue to improve what you're making because all in all, that's what people are buying. People are gonna be buying how good you are at that craft. But there's one other thing you gotta think about too. And the last thing that you really have to think about is well, why would someone wanna work with you? See, there's a lot of really good videographers, especially today. See, honestly, I believe that high quality video, the value of it is significantly lower. And that is just because it's so easy to come by. I mean, there are, you know, sub thousand dollar cameras that are just absolutely astonishing when it comes to the video quality. So the quality doesn't really matter. What matters is what can you provide people? that they don't already have. And that is the value that I'm talking about. See, when you are a filmmaker or a photographer and you want paying clients, you have to figure out a way to position whatever it is that you can offer them in a way that now seems valuable to them. So for businesses, this may be getting them more clients or it may be helping them sell a product or it might just be strengthening their current brand. But you wanna come up with a pitch that works really well for them. So when it came to like my initial real estate, I was looking for people who didn't have good videos or didn't have good photos. And so when I was reaching out to those very first clients, I told them, and I mean, in the nicest, most professional way possible, I noticed that you didn't have a professional video for your current property. I would love to come out and shoot one for you for absolutely nothing. The only thing I ask is that you allow me and my family to come and stay in your property over the weekend. And basically that's how my emails kind of ran for those people. And it worked. It got me started. It got me in the industry. And ever since then, I've never looked back. Now that same principle, I took it whenever I wanted to get into you know, shooting concerts. I took that same principle in whenever I wanted to start shooting you know, uh, businesses, I took that into whatever type of field I decided to jump into. I wanted to be able to exchange my talents for something that I could get, especially when starting out, because I am not the person that believes that you should shoot for exposure. I hate when people ask me to shoot for exposure. But if there's some type of way that you can find a healthy balance of value to each individual, especially when you're starting out, that's the way I think you should go about starting, and that's the way I think you should start by getting your first client. So that's what worked out for me. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, definitely give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button because this channel is all about filmmaking gear, tips, and tutorials, and so you'll love this channel. But don't forget to hit the bell because YouTube's being really weird about getting my videos out to everyone. So be sure to hit that, and thanks for checking out this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. However, I will add this. If you're ever in the Houston area, you want me to shoot for you, buy me pranks.
it'll definitely get you a discount.